Okay, FIAC, 80 gallon, FIAC, 20 gallon, FIAC air dryer. I'm gonna take you through uh, what I have set up here in my garage. Uh, also take you through the little portable version, um, but we now have uh, a rotary screw compressor that will work in a hobby garage like mine. I hate that word, hobby. That implies lazy to me. Uh, let's call it obsessed garage, but not obsessed level of, um, of uh, uh, output. Uh, you know, I use this thing once a week, maybe two times a week at the most. Uh, and so we'll talk about how this thing functions uh, and, and why you would need this type of rotary screw rather than a uh, traditional rotary screw. So this one is the uh, Silver 3 slash 300. Uh, this is an 80 gallon vertical tank. Uh, the only one I don't have here to show you is they have an 80 gallon horizontal tank, which is obviously, you know, much take this tank, turn it on its side, put this on, and then you'd have you know, two giant pedestals. Uh, I like the vertical because, you know, it doesn't take up as much floor space. Um, but 80 gallon tank, uh, and then uh, the three horsepower uh, screw compressor allows us to get about 11 CFM, uh, but that's 11 CFM at 130 PSI. So if you look at the, you know, sort of the exponential or the curve, uh, we're gonna get somewhere around 13 to 14 CFM at 90 PSI, uh, which is, you know, what we need to run these type of, uh, these type of pneumatic polishers. Pretty much any, you know, three quarter inch drive or down uh, air tool is gonna function just perfectly fine on, a, on a, you know, an 11 CFM at 130 PSI you know, uh, output device or output compressor. So the way that this thing works, where it's different than a typical rotary screw, and I've had my heart set on getting a Kaiser Air Tower, if you've ever seen those, an Air Tower 5C, I believe it's called. They're like eleven, twelve thousand dollars. Has a built-in dryer. Uh, it's a super silent, super quiet. They, you know, they operate just like this, somewhere around you know sub sixty decibels uh, at you know at full output. Uh, but the problem with a traditional screw compressor in a garage where we don't cycle it and aren't 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 utilizing it the way it's intended is you end up with water separating from the oil inside of the, the head uh, and you end up with rusting and then seal issues and all kinds of problems with the head of a very expensive compressor. Uh, and so what this, what this rotary screw does for us, we still get the super quiet operation. Uh, we get this kind of weird looking bulbous thing on top of the compressor, uh, but right on the side here behind this vent is a big heavy oil heater. Uh, and so this keeps the, the oil up at the temp very efficiently. Uh, and so that way we never have to worry about uh, the head rusting out and us having issues if you don't use it for two months or three months at a time. Just leave it plugged into the wall. It'll do what it needs to do. Uh, and the, you know, we won't have issues with the, you know, with the screws having to be, or the head of the, the compressor having to be replaced. Uh, and so the 80 gallon, the 20 gallon, the horizontal, they all come with the same head, the same three horsepower motor. These are identical. It's just that we have different tank options. So the other nice thing about these, uh, I've, I've been playing with my setup here, so don't judge me yet. I ordered another line. I love these T316 uh, flexible lines. I have them in the store. Um, these are much more pliable than a, uh, than if you were doing, like I did AN lines on my Jenny compressor. By the way, the Jenny compressors are still great. We still sell those, we still offer those. This is just a little bit higher end alternative. Uh, the Jenny is a American made, bulletproof, you know, ironclad piston, either single stage or two, two stage piston compressor. Uh, I still sell a ton of those. I think it's a great compressor. It's the one uh, that we do in probably more garages than we'll do these, but this is the, you know, this is the, the boutique. This is like the Ferrari uh, that we have, you know, that uh, you know, I want an option of if, you know, if sound is an issue, you don't have a room to put it in. Now, I like to see my compressor front and center. Uh, I like to look at it uh, because I look at it more than I use it. And so that's why, you know, I end up uh, putting this, this, this comp compressor here. But um, on the Jenny, we had done AN lines. The problem with AN lines is they're not as flexible as this. Uh, and so the way I had configured this setup, we'll talk about the air dryer in a minute here, um, but the air goes this way. And so what I'm gonna do, I, I bought a 72 inch line that I'll snake around and, and tie up so you won't see this. Um, but this compressor has your, uh, this has your, um, 
uh, your filter or your regulator built right into it. And our filters would be on our dryer here. Uh, and so I can adjust on the fly very simply. Now right now we're at 110 PSI. I'm gonna air down. Air down to about 90 PSI. And it responds really quickly. Uh, so our tank pressure is at uh, 110. Uh, and now, I actually bring it up a little bit. About 95 psi, and then I'll get you know through my airlines 95 psi from from you know from the the output of of the compressor here. One of the other nice things about this compressor, notice I don't have my Prevost regulator on the side. Uh, I made this system quite a bit simpler than I did when I built the Jenny system next door. Uh, I actually am utilizing the onboard or built-in. There's a built-in regulator uh, right on the right on the side here with a with a with a tank gauge and a and a line gauge and so I can very quickly right now it's at like 105 psi I can air that down pretty easily and bring my tank bring my output or my line output set it to about 90 psi just like that on off switch here so red obviously off green would be on and then we also have a, a gauge uh, it'll probably be a year or two before I need to change the oil um, but the the hour gauge would be there so that you can figure out you know when when the oil need to be changed there's also a fill line uh, right on the front here that you can see through and uh, see you know where the where the oil is make sure you check it periodically so on the Jenny system I actually had an Alto 3 on the wall uh, on this, I don't, won't feel it's necessary uh, because I have two filters on the back of my dryer, uh, and um, and then you know I, it would be kind of redundant to have a, another filter regulator sitting right here. Uh, and so the way we designed or set this system up is I put my wall manifold on the wall here, the Prevost uh, Euro High Flow wall manifold. I swapped out the coupler that comes with this. Now this is where it gets a little dicey to sort of do at your own risk. Um, these are Italian made, uh, so it has a BSP, I believe just a BSP fitting, uh, not a BSPP. Uh, and so the BSP will accept NPT, but you are galling up the threads as it kind of cranks down. Um, but as long as you put some tape on it, uh, I'm not going to be utilizing this sort of this outlet very often. Uh, and so I, you know, I feel like we're, we're safe and, and, uh, and using an NPT threaded uh, a Prevost coupler for this. Uh, and you're just fine. It's just super hard to source BSP fittings here in, in the U.S. And so I'm going your uh, Prevost S1 Euro High Flow out to a 3/8 plug, running directly into a th the 3/8 filter on the back of the of the dryer, and then the dryer is a pass-through device. So whether it's on or not doesn't matter. You know, I'm aired up now, so all my air lines are set up. I'm coming out of the dryer. I just happen to get unlucky in that the dryer is backwards, meaning airflow goes this way and then back out and around. Um, the way the dryer mounts, there are some keyholes on the side. Uh, I'm still kind of playing with how I'm going to set this thing up. I really want to build a bracket so that I can just mount this right to the side of the, the tank. Uh, it's not really designed for that, but you know everything I do is not designed for the way that I'm doing things. So, uh, so the dryer will pass. I believe this will pass like 35 CFM, so we're, we're, we have plenty of capacity here for the dryer. Uh, and then I'm going out and up into my loop uh, where I'm running all of my, uh, my airlines throughout and my hose reels throughout the, throughout the garage. So functionality works like this. I'm gonna pull, let me pull my airline over here. Then we'll talk about the 20 gallon. So again, my system's aired up. Um, if, you know, if I was concerned about leaks, I think we're good. I don't think I have any leaks, but if I did, I could just come over here, turn the system off. Uh, I also have a valve on my lift. I have a valve for each hose reel. Uh, so if I needed serviceability and I like one of my hose reels broke, I could just go turn the valve off of the hose reel, swap it out and keep the system running if I needed to. Clearly in a, you know, in a garage like mine, you know, we don't have, we're not dependent on this to do work every day. This is more of a, I've always dreamt of having an air compressor type of thing. Uh, and so that's why we have it. So when you're running air tools, like our pneumatic polisher, again, this is going to be really um, demanding on this compressor. 
uh, this will run a 100% duty cycle, and that's why you could run a 20-gallon tank with something that drew so much air, like a like a pneumatic polisher, because the tank, or I'm sorry, the the compressor could feed this even if the tank was was dry of air or or devoid of air. So let's just show you what this thing sounds like. Let's see how long it takes for it to come on. Oops, that was the air in my, in my lines. So this is what 59 decibels sounds like at like eight feet. I can still carry on a normal conversation, my normal voice level. It's really pretty remarkable. It's just such a better user experience than even having a piston compressor in like a closet somewhere, um, it's just a pleasant sound. It doesn't, it doesn't annoy you. It's, it's very Krenzler-like, only uh, you know, three times quieter than a, in a Krenzler compressor. So pretty, pretty amazing the way the thing functions. And as long as it can feed my, my polisher, this is gonna be the most demanding device that I have. Actually, the five inch would probably be, this one requires about 12 CFM. But that's at 90 PSI. I'd run the sucker all day. Now, if you had a six man crew, you know, this is not the right compressor. We'd want to size you a, either a FX silent piston or a Jenny compressor. Like my Jenny next door had, I think 26 CFM output. Uh, tons and tons of headroom on this. I'm gonna put this to the limit if I, you know, if I tried to run two of these at once, it's not gonna function very well. But the trade-off here is that, you know, I'm getting the appropriate amount of output, um, 80 gallon tank, it'll run, you know, periodically when I'm polishing. Uh, but if I'm blowing off a car or something like that, the thing's gonna run in once a week. And you can kind of hear it, you know, hear it just cycling down, the fans turning off, it's just so quiet. So. This is the uh, T-Dry 3, I believe it's called. It's a, a T-Dry from FIAC. Uh, these do not have any kind of signal sensing. Uh, if I was going to polish, what I would do, and you know, if I was blowing out pads, what I would do is I'd come in maybe five minutes before I got started. You know, I'd turn my, turn my operation on. This will start to cool the line and bring the temperature down to about 32 degrees and then a water will drop out the back of it uh, and so I'm going to be working on getting my oil water separator set up here uh, so that'll be a follow-up video once I have this system complete we'll, we'll dig into that uh, and so I know let's say I knew I was going to polish the car I'd walk in while I was setting everything up I turn my dryer on uh, and then I would I would probably um, I would I would generally what I'll do is once the dryer's on I'll come, I'll put a, uh, put a, a pad blowout or a, you know, a, a whatever you call this thing, an air, what is this thing called? An air, I'd grab an air gun and I'd run, I'd purge the lines. So I'd run this for like five minutes. And that would kind of purge and clean out all the lines of water and any kind of moisture. Uh, and so that's where I use the dryer, but you can hear, this is basically like a tiny little dorm refrigerator. The combination of these two devices is super, super quiet. I'm just sitting there holding this thing. Probably take about five minutes, you know, two to five minutes for me to get enough of a pressure drop in the lines, the loop that I have, and then the tank for it to kick on. But this is what I would do. I'd blow out the lines, get the, uh, get the, get this thing, you know, cycling through the air and then uh, we've also have good clean filtered air. I have to replace the filters periodically, uh, probably once every couple of years in an application like my garage. Uh, and so that's the that's the dryer setup. What I did here is I took my pressure washer bracket and I mounted it to the side of the compressor and I stuck a hockey hockey puck in there. So I'm going to have to figure out a little bit more permanent solution, uh, but that's the goal. 
Okay, so let's talk power, uh, what you need. Uh, this can't plug in, it looks like it would fit a normal 20 amp. You need a 220 volt, uh, um, 15 amp circuit uh, is what, what they require. Uh, what I have this one running on, because we already had a dedicated 30 amp for the, uh, there was a Quincy per, um, compressor here from the previous owner. Uh, and so I just took the plug off uh, and got a new plug, uh, which is a twist lock, you know, 30 amp plug, uh, which you're, you're fine if you had a dedicated 30 amp or 50 amp circuit. Uh, it's only going to draw what it needs. Uh, and so, but it comes, both of them come like this. Uh, you can't just plug it into a normal, you know, 15 amp circuit. So you're going to need, you're going to need a dedicated um, outlet or dedicated uh, setup for it, but not nearly as much requirement. You don't notice we don't have a knife switch anywhere. A um, lot simpler than some of the hefty or you know five six seven ten horsepower you know piston compressors or screw compressors that uh, that that you may you may have in a big big shop uh, so power the power requirements are pretty simple so this little guy here this is the uh, this is the silver 390 um, again, same output, same, you know, the 10.9 CFM at 130 PSI. Uh, so, you know, plenty of output for a pneumatic polisher. Uh, it's just a 20 gallon tank. I'd, I'd fire it up for you, but it's going to sound exactly the same and function exactly the same. Uh, it's just going to run more often. Again, these are capable of 100% duty cycle. Uh, so, so you could, you know, drain the tank and sit there, keep polishing away and it'll, it'll supply you the air. Uh, and has the same thing, same filter, same or same regulator, not filter, but same regulator on the side. There's a muffler on the top right here. That's why this little little kind of bump out uh, the oil heaters on the on the uh, opposite side. Uh, it comes with a Euro High Flow connection on it. I, I think most of these I'll I'll, I'll I'll recommend. You know, most of these would be sort of custom ordered from you guys. But um, what I did again is I took this cover off. I kind of just used a, uh, I had to use a, a file, just kind of filed the circle a little bit bigger so I could fit the, the Prevost S1 coupler on there. I, I'd recommend you do that. But this is a stainless, uh, stainless fitting that, that comes on the device. So anyway, this, uh, this, this little guy is, you know, you could easily just, I mean, it's not super light, but I could easily walk this around the garage. Uh, the people that I sold this to, uh, they were kind enough to let me uh, take photos of it and make a video of it for you so you could see just sort of the size difference between the two. Uh, but they're gonna be mounting the dryer, the T-dry, you know, either above it or beside it. Uh, so they have the same setup I have, they just didn't have the footprint uh, that we have in the, you know, in the 80 gallon. Notice mine, I don't have it bolted to the ground uh, because it's so quiet, it doesn't have this big kick on like a piston compressor. I haven't found it, it needs to bolt to the ground. It comes with little, basically little, uh, little mini hockey pucks that uh, hold its three feet in place. That's really all you need. So pricing, um, the way that these, uh, these list out, I think this list for 6,200, um, this one is, I want to say 5,300, 5,300 or somewhere around that. Uh, and so I've kind of worked with FIAC and uh, tried to get the pricing as, as practical as possible. Um, but this one here, uh, we're going to sell it for uh, 5,500 shipped. Of course, this is uh, May 21st, 2020. I don't know what pricing it'll, it'll go up or down from, from Europe. We'll see kind of what happens here, you know, with, with import uh, duties and taxes and things like that. Um, but the, the, as this stands without the dryer, uh, the unit, uh, and this really you could run this without, without a dryer, it's not necessary, uh, but it, it'll be uh, 5,500 shipped. Uh, this one is uh, 5,000 shipped. Uh, so, you know, I'm basically just building in, you know, 300 bucks in shipping because these have to come freight, they have to come residential to you, they have to come with a lift gate, all that stuff in order to get them off. Uh, but they come very well packaged. Uh, the Fiat guys are really good at getting these to you. And Intact without a bunch of bumps and bruises on them, uh, and so I've been really pleased with these two different shipments I've gotten. The dryer is, um, I believe, about uh, 1250 shipped, uh, and then we need a couple of uh, we need a couple of um, filters on the back. The filters are 120 bucks a piece, uh, and so you're around 1750, uh, or no. 
250, uh, about fifteen hundred dollars uh, for for a dryer. Most of the stuff we're going to help you. We're going to quote it out for you. Contact uh, support at obsessgarage.com, and we'll um, we'll you know we'll get you a designed system and help you to design your Prevost lines and all of that. So again. Very, very um, sophisticated machine, very high end, but very easy to use. It's very turnkey. Um, I felt like this was such a simpler process than dealing with a big, bulky, uh, big, bulky um, a piston compressor. They're a little bit lighter. I want to say a couple hundred pounds lighter because uh, there's no big cast, you know, giant piston on top. Uh, but uh, still, you know, something that uh, you're going to have to get a couple of buddies to come put in place. Uh, again, it'll come on a pallet freight to you. So that's the Fiac line. Um, they, again, they have the, the V, the vertical version of the 80 gallon, a horizontal version of the 80 gallon, and the, the uh, horizontal 20. Obviously a vertical 20 wouldn't work because the head you know, would be too top heavy and would likely tip over uh, the dryer as well. Uh, also keep, uh, keep an eye out, uh, we'll have a video series as well. Uh, some video set up on the little baby uh, Werther, Fiac Werther compressors. Um, so I have a little six gallon silent that operates at 40 decibels, a little six gallon uh, wobble piston. Uh, those are really designed for blowing out pads and filling tires. But these are full workhorses, can run pretty much air tool, any air tool you have, uh, as long as we're not you know, trying to run you know, 10 people at once. We can do that for you, but we're going to want to do something a little bit heftier, like a full rotary screw compressor or doing some sort of piston version. So thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm pumped about these. I'm telling you, this thing, the setup I have in here is just, mm, just ace. So good. It reminds me so much of the Krenzler on wall solution. I think we're going to, I know this is very expensive. I think we're going to sell a ton of these um, to those of us who want a compressor, want to be able to pneumatic polish, want to use air tools. I understand electric is getting better and better, but I still want a compressor in my garage. Uh, a lot of lifts require a compressor. Certainly not something this robust, but uh, this allows us to put a screw compressor in a garage where you don't have a dedicated room to get it out of the way. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I get it. I know these are crazy, but I want it. And my guess is that some of you do too. Catch you on the next one.